Galatians this morning. Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter number 6. You pray for us this morning. God help us. Amen. Still feeling a little bit weak, but uh, you pray the Lord would give us strength this morning. Galatians chapter number 6. Anyone got a word on your heart now before we, before we have prayer and begin the message? Anyone? Let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to call upon thee this morning. God, for the privilege of prayer. Lord, the opportunity to call upon you. God, ask you, God, for your help. Lord, we pray this morning, God, you forgive us of sin and failure. And God, as we come before thee, Lord, we know, God, that we need your help. We're nothing without you. Can't do anything without you. Well, there's no power in me, but I know there's power in the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. And we pray that you come take over this service this morning. God, move me out of the way. May the Spirit of God direct and help us. God, as we try to preach the Word of God, if there's someone here this morning that don't know you, I pray that you touch their heart with a spirit of conviction that they might come to be saved before it's eternally too late. Lord, if there's a child of God here that's feeling faint, Lord, they're feeling, uh, Lord, about like they'd like to give up and quit, I pray that you'd help them, give them strength today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter number 6. Now, I'm going to begin reading the chapter. And if we get to it this morning, if we get down to it, we're going to, uh, we're going to end up with a verse and, and uh, preach to you a little while. Now, I don't know if we get that far or not. Amen. I was studying this, and the more I studied, the more that seemed the Lord was giving us. So we're just kind of uh, going to start out preaching this morning. But if I get to the, uh, to the verse that I want to preach on, if the Lord will let us, where uh, whatever He wants is what we want, I preach to a message on don't faint. Don't faint. And... Uh, what, what does it mean to faint? It means that your brain ain't gotten, getting enough blood or oxygen or both. And uh, how many of you ever stood up real quick and passed out almost? Boy, that ain't as many as I thought it was. I really got problems. Amen. But sometimes you get up, you know, and, you, and you'll feel a little lightheaded, a little dizzy. That's because that's everything your brain needs ain't getting what it needs. Somebody told me, well, preacher, yours don't need much. Amen. That's true. Uh, but anyway, God knows that we need help from Him because sometimes spiritually we want to faint. Sometimes spiritually we get weak and, and uh, because of, of things in our life or because of, of uh, food that we're not getting from the Word of God because of lack of prayer or just because of the pressures of life, sometimes we feel faint-headed and faint-hearted. But the Bible tells us that we are to faint not. Now I'll begin reading with verse uh, number 1 of chapter number 6 of Galatians. And the Bible tells us here, brethren, now it's talking to believers. Paul is writing to believers at the church of Galatia. He says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, left, lest thou also be tempted. What does that mean? That means we see somebody that's fallen. Amen. We see somebody uh, that's, that's gotten out of the will of God. It means that we're supposed to try to help them and not kick them when they're down. Amen. A lot of times when someone, uh, someone uh, gets out of the will of God and maybe they could commit some sin that is known about and so, or some atrocity and, and God's people sometimes want to uh, just spread that gospel around rather than coming to them and saying, I'm going to pray for you. I know you're having a rough time. I'm going to pray for you. Ask God to help you and God will. Amen. So when someone's down, amen, let's pray for them. Let's lift them up to the Lord in prayer because we don't know when that might come to us. And we might fall. You say, preacher, I'll never beware, friend, of saying I'll never fall. Beware of saying I'll never fail. Uh, the Bible tells us that, that we must take heed lest we fall. And it could come our way. Somebody be trying to help us because we failed. I don't want to. I don't, but the, the possibility is always there for a believer to fall, amen, and to get out of the will of God. And what we do, friend, then is to help them up and help them up. You say, well, I'll have nothing to do with them, amen. It'll come your day one time, friend, and somebody will say that to you. I won't have nothing to do with you. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm glad, hallelujah, the day that I got out of the will. I'm glad I got saved, first of all. Glad I'm saved in the grace of God. 
But I know one day and I got out of the will of God. I'm glad people didn't say it's going to have nothing to do with you. But they prayed for me. Amen. They prayed for me and lifted me up to the Lord until I got my heart right with God. Hallelujah. And as God's people, that's what we should do is pray for them lest we also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If I'm burdened, friend, as a body of believers, then you should be burdened. If you're burdened as a body of believers, then I should be burdened to help you pray and to help you seek the face of God for that burden that's on your heart. What kind of burden are we talking about, preacher? Well, it might be the burden of a lost loved one under the Lord. I wish we'd gather, we'd gather burdens upon us for lost loved ones. I wish you'd get on us that God has laid on our hearts that there's people dying and going to hell. Our loved ones are going to hell. Our neighbors are going to hell. And I wish God would lay a burden on us that we pray for our lost loved one. Because those burdens, friend, I'm glad somebody prayed for me. Amen. I'm glad somebody was burdened for my soul amen, that I not go to hell. God help us to have a burden. And when we do, then we ask our, our friends and our neighbors and our, our brothers and sisters in Christ Help me pray for this lost person. They're going to hell without God. Or maybe it's some kind of other spiritual burden, the load that you're carrying that you can't tell nobody about, but you can always tell it to God. Amen. You can always bring it before the Lord and you can bring it before the church and say, please help me pray. I've got a burden on my heart. I've got something weighing, weighing heavy on me. Please help me to pray. We're to bear one another's burden. And then the Bible goes on to say, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. What are you today? If you're saved, you're a sinner saved by the grace of God. If you're lost, you're going to hell without God. That's exactly where we're at this morning, friend. I'm either saved, thank God that I am, or I would, even, I would be lost one way or the other. Anything else I say that I am, I'm just deceiving myself. I'm just a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen, wanting and willing by the help of God to be used of Him. But if I ever think that I'm something, friend, then I'll I, look out, I, you're, you're looking at a fallen preacher. Because I know, friend, that I'm nothing without God's help. And you should know today, saved by God's grace, you're nothing without the help of God. God help us that we understand that we need to stay close to the Lord and stay, stay close to Him that we not become, think we're something that we're not. But ever, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Amen. You do what you do to the glory of God, and God will help you, and God will use you, and God will encourage you, and you will let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Now this next verse down here seems to be contradictory to the verse where it says, uh, bear ye one another's burdens, because this verse says, for every man shall bear his own burden. Now what does that mean? Well, I, I'll tell you, it's a little different meaning here. It means that one of these days I'm going to bear the burden of my life before the judgment seat of Christ, and I am going to bear, have, I'm going to be an account for what I do down here in this life. Amen. And I, I'm the only one that can stand before God for me. I'm the only one that can come before the, the, the judgment seat of Christ for Gary Coates. I'm the only one that can do that. You can't do that for me. And there's friends, there's things in, in life sometimes that I have to bear that I have to bear alone. There's some things that it seems like, you know, I know the Lord's with me and I know God's, God's with me, but it seems like there's battles that nobody can help me with, but I'm glad, thank God, for, that Jesus can. Amen. So I bear those burdens, but the biggest burden I bear is that thought of when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, Lord, help me to stand before you and help me to live a life that will be pleasing in your sight so that when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ that the Lord can look on me and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, my friend, I want to do right. Amen. I want to do good. Lord, help us to bear that burden of thinking that we could stand before the judgment seat of Christ just any day. Any day now we could go to be with the Lord. And then soon after that judgment seat of Christ, bury everyone your own burden. Amen. In that respect. And then the Bible tells us this, <clears throat> Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. 
God's not more. You can't pull the wool over God's eyes. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now that's the simplest verse on sowing and reaping that I believe is in the the Word of God. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I'd say to you today, friend, I'm sure that you want to, if you're a child of God, you should want to sow good seed. You should want to sow seeds that will reproduce, and those seeds that reproduce will be seeds of Christians uh, that come up and you've reproduced that. But if we, if we sow to the flesh, then we're going to reap to the flesh. But if we sow to the Spirit, then amen, we're going to reap of the Spirit of God. So we, whatever we sow is what we're also going to reap. I, I used to plant a garden all the time. Don't anymore. Uh, don't, have the, don't have a place to do it. But used to plant a garden all the time. And you know what? I've never sowed a bean seed that didn't bring up a bean. Amen? I've never sowed a, a grain of corn that didn't bring up a stalk of corn. Isn't that they never brought up apple trees or, or beans or okra. When you sow okra, I get okra. And then whatever it is I'm planting, whatever I put out there, that's what I get. I've never planted a potato and gotten a tomato off of it. Amen. Plant potatoes, I get more potatoes. And what I'm trying to tell you today is whatever you're sowing in life, that's what you're going to reap. And guess what? I've always reaped more than I've planted when I've been planting a garden. I plant a row of beans, it might be a handful, but I get a bushel off of them. I plant a, a grain of corn and it comes up and got three years on it with all those grains of corn. So see, friend, when you're sowing and reaping, you've got to think this is going to affect down through my family, down through my youngin', this is going to have an effect, and whatever I'm sowing, that's what I also am going to reap. So, friend, what are you sowing today? Are you sowing good seed? Or are you sowing evil seed? Are you sowing seeds of the flesh? Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And here's the verse we wanted to get to. And be not, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Man, I, man ought to always pray and not to faint. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Everybody bow your head just a minute. That was all introduction. Now I'm going to preach to you just a little bit. I want to pray someone in the building this morning and say, Preacher, I'm about to have a fainting spell. I feel like the whole world's crashed down around me and and things just don't seem right. And I, and I, and I, I feel like I, I might, you know, I might faint if, the, if God don't help me. Is there someone raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me? God bless you. God bless you all over the building. All right, you look up. Amen. I'll tell you something. God's got, there's help for you. You don't have to faint. The Bible says that we faint not. not don't be weary in well-doing. If you're trying to do right, friend, just keep on doing right. Sometimes we think we're do, trying to do right and nobody else around us is. But I'll tell you, there's always somebody else around you that's trying to do right also. And friends, sometimes we look around and think we're the only ones in the world trying to serve the Lord. But I'll tell you, there's all kinds of people wanting to serve the Lord. Sometimes we look around and think, well, I'm doing this and nobody knows I'm doing what I'm doing. But I've got to quit doing this or else I'm going to faint and backslide on God. Hey, Amen. Go to the Lord. Ask for His help. He certainly will help you. Here's some things we should not faint of because <coughs> three things and we'll be, we'll be through. Don't faint because of the failures of the past. Don't faint because of what you've done in the past or what others have done in the past. I've had people come and tell me, well, such and such did this, so and so did this, and so and so did that, and if it's all right that they did it, it's all right that I do it. And I, if they're if they're going to give up on God after all these years, then why should I carry on for the Lord? Other Christians sometimes, friend, if they get out of the will of God and get out of fellowship with God, they'll want to they'll cause you to faint if you're not real careful. See, that's why I want to hang around godly people. And when I'm around those that are backslid on God, hey man, I want to guard myself lest I fall into that same temptation. But I want to be strong in front of those and around those that are cold on God and backslid on God. Oh, yes, friend, I'll help you if I can. 
But I'm not going to get where you're at. By the help of God, I'm not going to get there in your ditch. Amen. I'll try to help you out, but I'm not going to get down there in that ditch with you and get to the same level that you are because I myself, friend, want to stay right with God. Amen. They preach, what if I'm in a... I had this situation one time where this fellow, he got... He, I don't know what I'd have done. I guess I'd probably done what he did. But he lived rough over it for a while. But it, one, of his, one of his good friends was down at the bar drunk. And, uh, you know, he knew where he was at. And his, I believe the man's wife said, do you know where he's at? He said, yeah, I know where he's at. Now, this fellow was a good man, you know, good Christian man. This other fellow, I don't even know if he's saved or not. But he, she said, well, I need to get, he needs to get home. I need him here. He's going to get in trouble. He's going to wind up in bad trouble. Can you go get him? And so they, I don't know. I guess I'd probably walk in there, but it's a bar. It wasn't just a, it wasn't just a restaurant with a bar in it. It was a bar. I mean, just a, just a, a beer joint is what it was. And so he went down there, you know, and, and uh, he tried to get him out of there, and he caused a fight, and he got in all kinds. You know, he got in, caused all kinds of disturbance. But he finally got him out of there, and he, that, that boy lived a, a rough life for a while because everybody was on about going to that bar and getting that fellow out of there. Now, look, he didn't go in there to drink. He went and get somebody out of there that needed help. And I'd probably do the same thing. I don't have to, amen, I don't have to do what you're doing to help you, amen. You don't, hey, don't, listen, if you see this preacher get out of the will of God, if for some reason you used to see me drunk laying in the ditch, don't you dare get down there and get a drink with me for yourself. Hey, man, you get me out of the ditch and try to help me, but don't you dare do what I'm doing, hey, man, because that won't help me. That'll hurt you. I'll pay for my own sins, friend. Believe me, we pay for our own sins. Oh, I want to tell you something. Don't, don't be faint because of the failures of others in the past or the failures that you've done in the past. And I'll tell you something, I look back on my life and I had there's many failures in my life. But what can I do about that now? You look back on your life and say, well, I've done a lot of things wrong. I mean, it might have been yesterday. You can't do nothing about what you did wrong yesterday. Not a thing. What's done is done. But don't faint over it. Ask for God's forgiveness, confess your sin before Him, He'll forgive you, and He'll help you to get up and go on by the grace of God. Amen. So don't faint because of the past failures of yourself or of others. There's been preachers that I've looked up to that have fallen by the wayside. Sorry to say. There's been preachers that I've looked to that I've you know, that I've considered great men of God, good evangelists. And they've been caught up in sin, and it's usually the sin of adultery. That's what happened. That's what affects most preachers is that sin. You hardly ever find one that went out, that got out of, out of preaching because he was a drunk or a drug addict. It's usually because of adultery, some sin like that. And I know I've had, I've had preachers that have done that. And you know that hurts. That God help me not to get that way. Amen. By the help of God, I ain't going that way. And oh, friend, I'm not going to be discouraged because of the failures of others. But God help me to stand firm upon who God is, what He is, and what He's got to do in my life. Amen. So don't faint because of the past failures of others. Then number two. Don't faint because of the immediate failures of yourself and others. And I'll tell you something. You dig around in my life, and you won't have to go far. You'll find something I've messed up at. Because it's what I do. I mean, it's what people do. You follow me around, and you'll see this preacher do something wrong about every day. Because I'm, I'm not perfect, sister. I'm not perfect. But listen, if you see the preacher mess up, or if you see your daddy or your mama or your brother or your sister mess up, don't faint because they did. Don't faint because, you know, don't faint because you've seen somebody else mess up to yesterday or today. Say, so what do I do, preacher? Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
keep your eyes on Him because that's the way that you won't faint is if you keep your heart and your eyes on Jesus and you keep in conversation with Him. I love my wife. Amen. I wouldn't trade her for nothing. I love her. But you know what? If I didn't talk to her, at least every week or two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I catch it all the time after these services. I'll just tell you. I don't get by with nothing. But if I don't talk to my wife every day, if we don't communicate every day, if I went a month or two like that, you know what would happen? We'd grow apart. And we've been married 36 years. But don't give me that look. I knew We've been married 36 years. People can't believe that. 36? You've been married 36 years? Yeah. But you know what? We still communicate every day. Just because we've been married 36 years don't mean we don't need to talk to one another. Sometimes we have a little spat. Hello? Don't look so sanctimonious. You got a marriage like that? Somebody's henpecked bad. Amen. You ain't got no opinion at all if you never have a little spat once in a while. Most people just won't admit it. Oh, me and my wife, we get along so good all the time. We've never had a word of hogwash. Because somewhere along the line, you're going to disagree on something. Amen. It's bound to happen. Yeah, I'm getting a few people that are opening up. Amen. But listen, that's how you work out your differences if you got them. But listen, if I don't stay in close contact with my wife, then we'll grow apart. Same way it is in my Christian life. I'll faint. I will faint if I don't stay in contact with the Lord and if I don't let Him speak to me through His Word and if I don't talk to Him in prayer, then I'm going to faint. I'll, I'll grow apart from God and I don't want to do that, friends. This day that we live in, we ought to be closer to the Lord than we've ever been in our life. God, help us not to faint because of the, of the present failures of others. Lord, help us stay close to You. You say, well, I know such and such. It's out of the will of God. And they ain't been to church in years. They're not in church today. I don't know what to do. You pray for them. You lift them up to the Lord. But don't you get out of church. Don't you get out of the will of God. I had the notion, I've had the notion in the past that if I just did what other people were doing, that I could get them to come closer to the Lord. If I do what other people are doing, I'm going to start doing what they do. I mean, it's not good. It never hardly ever works, friend that you get out in the world and the world don't, don't draw you away from God. So don't think because of the immediate failures of yourselves and others, if you quit, if you give up because of what somebody else is doing, amen, you're the only one that can ever get that right again. Then number three, and we'll be through, don't think because of future failures. You know, now wait a minute, preacher. We, if we don't faint because of that, we don't faint because of present failures, then how do you know we're going to fail in the future? Because I know how the old flesh is. I know how the old flesh works. And we fight it and we battle it, but sometimes, friend, sometimes we're, we're going to mess up. You know what the prodigal son did? He, he fainted is what he did. And he got out of the will of God. But down there in the far country where he was, where everything was going wrong, and he he understood that that uh, you know that that he needed to get back right with God. That was a future, that was a future thing in his life. But guess what he did? He got up and went back to the Father and made things right with the Lord. So don't think because of of future failures. You say, well, preacher, I don't want to mess up. I don't either. But I know there's bound to come a time when I mess up. Am I going to quit? <coughs> I encourage you, don't faint because of future failures. Get up and go on. If every time I ever fell physically, if I, if I never got up, I'd lay there and die. I fell on my head when I was little. That's it. That's the answer to all of it right there. But I was thinking about this the other day. I, I think I had a concussion. I couldn't have been over four or five years old. There was a mimosa tree down in down in May, when you remember mimosa tree? I climbed up in that thing. And what little boy don't climb a tree if there's one around to climb? And I remember falling off and hitting my head. I remember that. And, uh, of course, you know, we didn't rush off to the doctor every time. Now I'd been my younger now, and, we, you know, I'd probably tell the doctor, but we didn't end because that's just, you didn't do that. You 
got up and kicked himself and went on. But I got sick, got deathly sick. And I, yeah, I got sick in my stomach and I threw up and I, I probably had a concussion. But I had a fall. But guess what? That didn't stop me. I climbed the tree again. And I know soon, I know someday, friend, that I'm going to fail again. And I may not fall and hit my head spiritually. I may not get that far down. But if I do, if, listen, if I don't get up and go on, friend, then I'll just, I'll just die a failure. And I don't want to die a failure. I don't want to die in a fainted state. I know people that have lived their life to serve the Lord, and then something happens, they get out of the will of God, and they die that way. They die in a fainting spell. Listen, if you're about ready to give up, if things have gotten rough in your life, amen, I'm not going to tell you that life is always going to be a bed of roses, but there is a brighter day coming. There is a day when you can see the light at the end of this dark tunnel. And if you'll stay with the Lord, amen, you'll get on the mountaintop one of these days, and you'll be so glad that you stayed with God. You'll be so glad that you didn't fall by the wayside. You'll be so glad that you didn't faint. And just to warn you, someday you're going to be attempted by the devil and by the flesh to fall by the wayside. But don't faint because of future failures. Look up, friend. The Lord is coming. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to him that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Stay with the Lord. No matter what you're facing, stay with God. It's worth it, friend. He'll help you. Don't faint. Be encouraged. Be strong in the power of His might. Father, we thank You for the Word of God this morning. God, I pray Your blessings upon it. I pray, God, if there's someone here this morning, God, that don't know You, I pray that You'd help them, Lord, to understand that they must be born again. Or if there's someone here that's on the verge of giving up on you, I pray, God, you'd encourage their heart not to faint but to keep on. In spite of past failures, in spite of present failures, or in spite of the thought of future failures, God, help us, Lord, to stand and serve you and stay with you. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Every head bowed, no one looking around. Let me ask you a question. I wonder if there's someone here that say, Preacher, I'm lost. I don't know what it is to fail except that I'm lost and, and need to be saved, I want to pray someone raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me, I'm lost.